thank you everybody for joining the show today. It is the uh, 21st of the month and uh, we have some uh, good content that's going to be coming up today, next week, and to follow. Uh, the host of our uh, show of CSS Nation is Purnell Husband and myself, uh, Harry Mullen. Now, not too long ago, I posted on a CSS Nation group in uh, Facebook to ask questions of, you know, what kind of topics did people want to uh, talk about and hear us uh, talk about. And so we had a student of mine uh, named Angel who went ahead and posted, and uh, we thought it would be nice to actually switch things up a little bit. Normally, hosts will in interview a guest uh, but today we're going to have the guest be the interviewer. So she's going to interview uh, the interviewers. And so I'd like to welcome Angel Jimenez to the show. Hi, Angel. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Pretty good. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get right into it. Um, so Angel, you, uh, you had some questions for us that you wanted to ask us. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and get started. Yes, I, I did. Thank you. So I'm somebody who I've just completed my course. And like Carrie mentioned, he was my instructor. And so now I'm, you know, a little bird getting ready to leave the nest. And um, so my questions pertain more to um, starting out in the field. And so the first one would be, of course, in order to get the job, you have to interview for it. Um, so what are your best practices or, you know, things to keep in mind to do during the interview? Very good question. And of course, uh, because I started off the show, I'm going to go to uh, Purnell to go ahead and uh, kick us off on the answers first. Absolutely. Well, Angel, once again, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. I am probably more nervous than you are. <laughs> <laughs> so as far um, as interviewing, there are a couple of things that we always tell our students to keep in mind when they go in for the interview. They're very basic. Um, everyone should know these, but not everyone does. So when you greet the person that is going to interview you, you always want to have eye contact. Nothing too creepy. Mm -hmm. But you want to have <laughs> eye contact, right? <laughs> You're presenting yourself for the very first time. You want to leave a lasting impression. And a firm handshake and eye contact is always a good way to start off an interview. The mm -hmm. other thing is we always recommend that you don't take your seat unless the interviewer asks you to take your seat it's always a good idea to let them sit down first or to, or, or to have them have you take a seat. Okay. Once you take that seat, your posture becomes very important, obviously. Again, you're presenting yourself for the very first time and you want to leave a lasting impression. Eye contact, a good firm handshake and good posture, we think is a very good way to start off the interviewing process. That's a, those are great tips. Yeah. In addition, um, you have to remember when going on your uh, interviews is that uh, you only have that first impression in order to leave a good one. Right. So it's very important to make sure that you, uh, you know, dress appropriately for the job. I've seen individuals come in with, uh, you know, logo T-shirts and stuff and jeans. And so, you know, I, as you remember in class, I... I tell people, ladies, gentlemen, now you don't want to get into a suit or anything, you know, where you're uh, business attire uh, when you're interviewing for a tech position. But you do want to wear uh, a dress shirt or a blouse, mm -hmm. uh, black pants or, you know, for the females, a, a skirt, a black skirt. Uh, so be, you know, dress for success, dress for the job that you're wanting to go for. You know, for sterile processing, we're not going for uh, you know, housekeeping, we're not going to work in the right. kitchen, you know, so it's a, it's a technical and a professional field being in sterile processing. So again, remember that first impression. All right. And, nice. uh, and then also, I mean, if you, uh, if you've gone to a good school, they should be able to uh, prepare you 
with kind of like a script, you know, what, what to expect right. into the interview. I think that's very important to kind of practice ahead of time, uh, know what you're, you're going to say. And then what's really important is that when you go on the interview, have fun. Don't go in with any expectations that uh, oh, I have to get this job or something like that. Right. Know, know that everything that you're doing is to gain experience. Know that they can't take anything away from you when you're going on the job interview. They can only give you something. They can either give you a good experience when you're uh, going through the interview, so you know uh, future interviews, kind of what to expect, or they can give you the job. You know, so and then always go back to your instructor uh, if they offer this service to talk to them about what the interview was like, uh, something that you uh, felt uncomfortable about, what, whether it was a question that you had difficulty with, you know, go back to your, your instructor and kind of review that uh, with them. Right. That's really good to know. And I like the part about the posture, too, because that would show that you're confident, confident person, candidate for the job. Absolutely. So before, your next, <laughs> before your next question, I would just add, um, there's certainly nothing wrong with smelling our best. But we always try to tell people, you know, less, <laughs> less is more when it comes to cologne. And right. You know, the person oh, yeah. that's going to be interviewing you, you have no idea what their sensitivity level may be to whatever it is you're wearing. So less is always more. It's a good idea. Again, remember, we, we may be talking to people that have never interviewed. Brush mm -hmm. your teeth. Use mouthwash. You do not want to walk into somebody's office and completely turn them off. Right. That's right. a way to not get the job. So remember, the hygiene is critically important. Yeah, one of That's the things good. I do, uh, instead of putting on cologne uh, when I'm going on a job interview, I have I actually have a, a really good uh, uh, you know deodorant that I use. It's called a, a secret. You know, it's oh. not just it's not just for women. I get the uh, powder fresh. <laughs> And so I put it underneath the arm. I also put it on the chest. And where do you put it, Harry? You put it under the arm? Is that where you put the it? arm and on the chest and stuff. So that that okay. becomes my perfume, so to speak. So that way, you know, definitely. Angel, you can't get this in by like anyway. shower fresh. <laughs> Shower fresh, rain fresh, powder fresh. <laughs> yeah, that's the secret. That's the secret. That's the secret. And it's not too strong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's those are great tips. <laughs> I never thought about the chest part. So. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean that's that's a guy thing. You can put it behind the ear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on to the next question. <laughs> moving on to the next question. Okay, so having gone through the interview with these great tips, um, you know, most of the time there's a probationary period in which I would assume, you know, this is something obviously really important in this industry. Um, so what are things to, you know, be cognizant of during the probationary period so that you know it's successful and that you're going to be officially offered the job? Well, well, there, you know, there is so many things, uh, you know, we've done research on this in the past, uh, you know, when you're wanting to pass probation and uh, this one site that uh, actually Purnell uh, had uh, let me know about, uh, you know, there's probably about 10 things. I'm not going to go through them all, but like the first one, you want to make sure that you're working hard, you know, mm -hmm. so when you first start your new job, you know, you don't actually uh, know that much about it. You don't know what to do. So you have to pay attention to uh, the, the training process that you're going through, the inductions and uh, instructions, you know, and how to what priorities there are, you know. And so it's going to take a few weeks in order to get your bearings and stuff and know 
what's going on in uh, the department and stuff. So, you know, now not everybody, but some people are already workaholics and therefore mm -hmm. you know, they can't give any more than what they do because they just put 110% in, but that's not generally everybody. So one of the things that, that you can do is once you start to feel comfortable after a couple of weeks, you want to slowly make sure that they're seeing that you're being more and more productive as you go mm -hmm. along. All right. Uh, second thing is never overstep your mark. In other words, uh, you know, know the, the difference between uh, becoming an outrageously productive newbie or an outrageously annoying know-it-all. You know, mm -hmm. some people, especially coming out of school, they've read the book and, you know, they see things that are not necessarily what they learned in school. Right. So, again, you have to learn your surroundings and, and, and be careful of uh, what you say. Now, it's always best instead of telling somebody, hey, well, that's not what I learned in school. It's mm -hmm. better to ask questions. You know, why right. are you doing it this way? And stuff. So the thing you have to remember when you're going, uh, when you're starting a field, you want to make sure that you under, you know, you understand that your primary role after getting that job is to pass probation. All yeah. right. And the last thing you want to do is is be annoying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't want to be annoying. That's for sure. <laughs> None of that. <laughs> That's definitely for sure. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Pernell? Well, so let's start out with what is the probationary period, right? Mm -hmm. It's a period of time that the employer has to basically check you out to see whether or not you're going to be a good fit for that organization. Um, it protects the employer from bringing somebody on who is gonna cause havoc and mayhem. They wanna see you in the real setting. They wanna see how you communicate. They wanna see how you work. Mm -hmm. Kind of makes sense, right? right? So it's that period of time for them to check you out. It's also your mm -hmm. opportunity to see whether or not this organization is going to be a good fit for you, mm -hmm. right? The people that you're gonna to have to work with, what kind of manager am I gonna be dealing with? You should be looking at those things as well. This is your time to evaluate them as well. So you have a huge job during this probationary period. First of all, you're trying to get this job, right? And you're trying to determine whether or not this is the place for you. So there's a lot going on. And I would say that's probably the simplest strategy to employ during the probationary period. Work hard, communicate professionally and effectively with people around you. Don't be late during the probationary period. Right. right? Be there <laughs> on time. Um, and I think those are some things to really um, keep in mind. You're evaluating them just as they're evaluating you. Right. That's a great insight. Yeah. And also it's learn to take the time to learn uh, from others, you know. Mm -hmm. so be sure to ask questions and uh, be appreciative of any help, advice that uh, somebody uh, gives you, you know. So don't expect uh, to know and understand everything right away. Um, you know, my first, it took me probably a good three to five years before I really felt comfortable in my role as a sterile processing technician. Wow. And that and I'm not talking about my role as doing the job, you know, learning the cleaning of all your equipment uh, and the instrumentation, the, the, uh, the assembly of them, uh, sterilization, picking mm -hmm. cases and stuff. Uh, you know, that, that happened probably, you know, pretty quickly within the first six months to a year. Uh, the rest of it was that getting to know the nuances of dealing with the other departments, your customers and right. stuff. So, uh, you know, you have to make sure that, you know, you understand what those expect expectations are going to be, 
you know, what, uh, what's going on. Uh, and uh, so, take, again, take the time to learn uh, your surroundings. Okay. And, and know and understand the probationary process. Ask questions. How long is it? Um, how am I going to be evaluated? What are the expectations that I need to meet during this process? Mm -hmm. And finally, when do I know that I have the job? Right. <laughs> so what are you going to tell me? <laughs> so the key, a key to remember as well, Angel, is to go in, you want to know what the expectations are. Right. Mm -hmm. If you want to win the game, you have to know the rules to the game. Right. So find out, have that communication. I really want this job. I really want to do well during this probationary period. Mm -hmm. So please tell me and be very clear about what expectations you have of me. Make a list of those expectations. Right. Again, you want to win. So know the expectations. Understand what the probationary period is all about and you want to hear it from the manager right all right also, to make like sure that, that uh, you know communication is going to be key mm -hmm. all right you want to make sure that you're communicating clearly professionally especially if there's something that you don't understand absolutely there's nothing right. wrong with asking <laughs> questions and nobody expects uh you know, a new employee to understand everything when they're first coming in. Right. So, uh, again, communication is going to be key. You know, another thing, understand the company's policies and procedures. One of the first things that a lot of companies, um, you know, there's a, the company I worked for and Purnell worked for for, uh, for a period. I worked for Kaiser Permanente for 23 years. And yeah. the very first thing... Good old they, Kaiser. Yeah. The very first thing they did my first week is they sat me in the office and they handed me the policies and procedures for the facility and for the department. You know, so you have to understand uh, those uh, policies and procedures. And, you know, don't make the mistake I did when I first got into the field. I just kind of perused the policies, read through them a little bit. Uh, but you know, I didn't really memorize them. It took me uh, some time to, you know, and I kept asking my manager, you know, well, what's the policy on this? And so she would just put me in the office again, hand me the policies and procedures and tell me to look it up. And finally I woke up and was like, oh, okay. Yeah. The, I, the answers were already there. So Again, understand your policies and procedures. And again, going in, you're not going to be aware or know all of the policies and procedures right, right away. But there are going to be some policies and procedures that that manager or supervisor will share with you, some very critical ones. And it is your responsibility and obligation to make sure that you follow those policies and procedures and whatever other regulatory and compliance issues that they may have shared with you during the orientation process. Very important. So a lot of times, you know, people use the orientation process when you first uh, go into the hospital and you get that job no. to kind of sleep, you know, hang out, talk to people. But there's some very important information that's passed um, during the orientation process. Some of it will be of a regulatory and a compliance nature. And they will share some very important policies and procedures um, having to do with how you interact with employees, mm -hmm. having to do with behavior on the job, having to do with breaks and lunches and that kind of thing. Right. You want to make sure that you're following those um, to the T. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I touched upon it a little bit uh, about your attendance. Mm -hmm. And you actually touched upon it again, but in a different uh, aspect. So mm -hmm. your time attendance, pay attention to the time when you arrive at work. Make sure that you're always showing up on time, if not early. 
Right. And time attendance when it comes to when you go on your break and coming back from break, go on lunch and when you're coming back from lunch. Because uh, when managers see that you are going on break and you take an extra five, 10 minutes to, you know, to get back or you go to lunch and you, you know, same thing, you're taking extra time to get back. They notice that. So you have to remember that the probationary period is not just the opportunity for the manager to determine whether or not they want you to stay in the department. Mm -hmm. It's also an opportunity for you to decide whether or not this role fits you uh, in not just sterile processing, but are you a good fit for the company or is the company a good fit for you? Cause you know, you could be a good fit for companies, but then the, the culture in, in the department could be not what you're looking for. And I'll give you a, a, a real world example. Um, things that I did as a manager or as a director, I would talk to one of my leads. Hey, so how's the angel doing out there? She's, she's doing okay. So what's she like? What's her attitude? She seems pleasant. She seems, you know, she's talking to people. So those conversations obviously are going to be going on. Right. Especially with the manager who's engaged and who's a good manager. You're going to ask people that you trust and and, and about that person. Remember, you're under scrutiny the whole time during the probationary period. Everyone that you come into contact with is a potential evaluator. So that needs to be in the center of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing to remember (laughs) when you're going into work. (laughs) Everyone else around you is evaluating you. Absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. She curses a lot. Her breath is bad. (laughs) All of that comes out. It does, right? It's normal, He wears deodorant on his chest. (laughs) (laughs) She must not know the secret. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's funny. That, that's, see, and that's good. You're yeah. paying attention to what's going on uh, in, right. during this interview uh, of us. And uh, that's exactly what you do. Take those tools of, of, of learning and uh, going into uh, the department and stuff. Right. So before uh, we go on to uh, the next question, uh, Angel, uh, Mm -hmm. it's now time for a uh, quick commercial break. Okay. uh, Everybody, we'll be right back. The job market right now is, I feel much better than it was even when I went in. As the result of the COVID pandemic that we've had, our profession has been even under more spotlight and given even more of an opportunity. We're infection control, we're infection preventionists, and breaking the chain of infection and destroying viruses is our job, and it's what we're trained to do as professionals. That field is going to keep growing and growing. The sterile processing field was a great way to come into the hospital setting. Again, you're coming right into the operating room. Well, we're back, and I want to thank everybody for uh, staying with us. Again, we have uh, Angel Jimenez, who is a past student who has uh, graciously uh, agreed to come on to be the interviewer while Purnell and I ask uh, or answer her questions. I'll so, to questions. you know, so we had uh, uh, we have another question uh, or two that uh, Angel wanted to ask, and uh, so yeah. Angel, go for it. Yeah, um, and actually, you both kind of touched on it a little bit um, as far as like the first six months. Um, so that's a big question on my mind a lot as I'm, you know, going to embark on this process. Is you know, what can I expect um, on the job for those first six months? You know, what what things would I experience? You know, what should I be looking out for? You know, the the whole picture. You want to take that here? That is a loaded question. So <laughs> you know, as much as, you know, we don't want to scare anybody away from this field, there's a lot of positiveness that can take place. And there is some negative, you know. So um, when you first go into the department, depending on, again, goes back to culture. Uh, and, you know, I'm not talking about, uh, ethnicity or what people have learned right. 
and you know from their communities and stuff. But sterile processing definitely has its own community, and uh, so and, and it all stems from the manager. You know, what does the manager? Uh, you know, what are they portraying? And you know, the the staff pick up on some of these cues. So, you know, when you're new in the field, you can. Uh, Sometimes people will expect more of you and not realize, especially, you know, somebody brand new in the field, they're going to, mm -hmm. you know, well, why aren't you picking it up real quick? You should be able to do this. Yeah, you went to school. Uh, and the reason being is because often, you know, actually how I got into the field some 33 plus years ago, they didn't have a school uh, to, wow. to teach us this stuff. Uh, you know, you were hired off the street. And so you had to learn everything. And so it was uh, really daunting to try to pick up something that you didn't even have a basic concept. But nowadays we do have schools and we mm -hmm. do have, you know, so we have the books that talk about the standards and the different sections from decontamination to prep assembly, sterilization, case picking, uh, high level disinfection. And so Sometimes the, the staff will, you know, expect more of you when they really shouldn't. And, again, the culture can be such that it's, it's not a positive one. Uh, you know, n knock on wood, uh, I've actually been at many facilities that uh, majority of them are very positive and stuff. Mm -hmm. But you have to be aware of the fact that you can walk into a bad situation where people are not necessarily nice. Mm -hmm. So just be prepared for that. Okay. That's very good to know. Good advice. I think on top of that, you can and should expect some confusion. You're just coming out of school. Mm -hmm. You've been taught things by the book. You've been taught best practices. And you're going to go into a situation where people have been working in this field for, depending on the size of the hospital and, you know, that kind of thing. There could be people work, that have been working in the field for 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so they've been used to doing things a certain way. You're going to work with people who have not had the benefit of going to a formal class. Right. So there's going to be some confusion. You're going to see some things happening a little bit different to the way than you were taught. So keep that in mind. Okay. Um, all you new people out there, don't be freaked out by it. Okay. So that's going to happen. And there's ways um, to deal with that. If you see things happening that you have questions about or you think uh, they may be inappropriate, don't approach that person that's doing it. Talk to your supervisor. Talk to the person in charge and just explain to them, you know, what's on your mind. Hey, I was taught to do it this way in class, but I see people doing it this way. That's going to happen. But the other thing is, obviously, we all know this, right? Personalities. Mm -hmm. You can start to learn people's personalities you're going to start to understand who to stay away from. This is the real world, right? Um, you'll start developing, who can I go to for help? Keep that in mind. Who's nice? Who's approachable, right? So you want to start, in your mind, cultivating certain people that can help you along your journey. You want to keep in mind. And depending on where you end up, it could be very technologically advanced or everything could be pencil and paper. Right. Right. And I think you want to start cultivating the key personalities that you think would work for you. Right. They're going to be people who are like, I don't teach. I don't do that. And they're going to mm -hmm. be like, Miha, come on over here. This yeah. is the way you do this. This is the way you do that. <laughs> Got you with that. You know? yeah. <laughs> That's the way it's going to work. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of that happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, also, um, because you're in your 
generally most probationary periods are going to be between three to six months. Uh, most of them are at least six months, even up, you know, I, I've seen a few facilities where they're one year, uh, they're about uh, yeah. a year long. So you have to understand that you want to use this probationary period of time to learn everything you can about the company, about your role, in order so that that way you're able to ensure that you are able to fulfill the expectations that are put upon you, uh, but also make sure that this is the right environment for you. Mm -hmm. Again, there's going to be negativity, so you have to be prepared uh, to be able to deal with that. And if you find that it's too much, don't be afraid to start looking for another uh, location. If, if in the beginning it looks yeah. like you're jumping from facility to facility, you know, at some point, once, you know, uh, let's say the fourth employer that you're interviewing at, you know, they're like, well, we've noticed in the last year and a half that this would be your fourth facility that you're potentially coming to work for right. and so the thing is is that what how you answer a question like that is that you know what it has to do with the culture i want a good fit i'm looking for a company that not only do i fit with them but they fit my expectations as well That's right and mm -hmm. unfortunately you know the employer themselves were great but the coworkers uh, did not meet my expectations. You know, they were a little bit, you know, harsh and not understanding that I'm new to the role. And uh, so that's why you see me jumping around. You know, don't try to deflect it and say, well, well, you know, be honest about what your exper uh, experiences has been. But when you're doing that, never bash the actual employer that you that you're leaving or the previous mm -hmm. employers because uh, that can be interpreted as being uh, a negative thing right yeah okay. I, I think in this day and age uh, especially in sterile processing um i mean there are tons of hospitals so you really get to choose where you want to work and there's enough stress in our lives. There's enough stress in the world. <laughs> Who wants to go into work in a stressful environment? Right. So like Harry said, yeah, you know what? They weren't a good fit. Um, yeah. There's if, 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 that, if that manager that's interviewing you wants to know more specifics, support is always a nice key thing to put out there. There wasn't mm -hmm. enough support for new people. Right. That kind of thing. One of the other things I wanted to, to put in there before we moved on was during this first six month period, make it one of your goals to learn those instruments. Mm -hmm. Learn the instruments, learn how to inspect them appropriately during that period of time. You should master, you should know the key sets that are used the most in that department, you should have those down within that six month period. You know, in addition there, um, again, because of the culture that uh, you could be faced with within the department, you're gonna wanna show your social side, all right? Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that in some way that you're bonding with your peers. Uh, so that way, uh, you know, because believe it or not, it is a, a type of family. You, if, if you end up staying with the employer, uh, you'll end up spending more time with your coworkers than you do mm -hmm. with your own family. Yeah. So uh, you have That's to be, very strong, true. you know, so periodically, you know, they might invite you to lunch or you might want to invite them for, uh, for lunch. So, you know, so that way you can get to know each other. You know, I personally am not the type of person that while I'm working on the job, I don't like to talk about personal stuff while on the job. But mm -hmm. during the break time, during lunchtime, you know, that's the time, you know, to let down the hair, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> on my behalf. But, uh, you know, uh, you know, you want to find the commonalities, you know, because everybody's different. But if you can find something that you have in common with your coworkers, 
you have a, a better opportunity to be able to create that bond with them and to be able to create that social structure that you yourself, even though you're the new person or anybody listening to this, uh, this episode, you know, that they are learning to create a team, you know, just because you're new in the field does not mean that you cannot set the standards of what it is that you're looking for and what, and how to create the, uh, a perfect team. All right. In, in addition, so you want to, part of that being sociable, uh, you want to smile, not too much. All right. They don't <laughs> want you to go, you, know, you don't want to uh, look crazy or something like that. But <laughs> pardon, pardon my, my language, but, uh, you know, I, ha I, I want to say this because this is me. I go through a department and sometimes I have to have a smile on my face. Um, I know people can't see it. Well, right there, there's this little line that, <laughs> when I'm, you know, when I'm just normal and just relaxed, I have that resting bitch face. Uh -huh. so, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I have to overcompensate by walking through with just a smirk or a smile. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm always in a good mood, that type of thing, you know. So you want to smile, but you don't want to go through, <laughs> you know, because then they're going to go, that person is crazy, <laughs> you know. And then ultimately – don't sabotage yourself. All right. Mm -hmm. Remember that uh, you know, uh, you know, you have your probationary period. What you, you understand why you're there. Uh, there are some sort of people that they they sabotage themselves. You know, and you know, you don't want to get sacked from the job. And so, so part of the, what you got to do is you got to listen. Again, learn the culture, learn what's going on, what are the policies and stuff. And, uh, you know, just never forget, you know, how your behavior is going to affect your future. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's, yes. that's, I think that's, you know, pretty much on as far as, you know, what I have to say. And there's so yes. much, I mean, we can literally go on uh, and probably talk for a complete hour. And sure. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to add to that the social aspect that Harry mentioned, which is very important. Um, you want to know people and you want to get along. And the way you do that is by having relationships and, and, and also hitting on sabotage. Sometimes uh, people come into a job and in their effort to want to be friendly and to want to know people and that sort of thing, they end up sharing too much too soon mm -hmm. or they don't think about what they're sharing and then very early on, very early on you know the die is cast the concrete gets hard they right. see you this way oh i'm a this or this is my religion oh i voted for this person mm -hmm. um you want to, again, be sociable, obviously. You want to communicate clearly. You want to be friendly with people. But you don't have to let them completely in. Right. That's okay. Because, again, there's a lot of push-button issues and lots of young technicians, to use a word that Harry just expertly used, sabotage themselves. They set themselves up for failure because they share too much, right? And sometimes they share it too soon. Mm -hmm. You don't have to share everything, right? Right. Something and they don't realize they're doing it. That's that's the sad yeah. mm -hmm. because nobody sat down and 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 talked to them ahead of time. And that's what I you know what I really uh, love about this show is that uh, hopefully you know we're going to be touching upon subjects that people have heard. We're just going to give our insights on it. But we're also going to touch upon subjects that people uh, probably have never heard, or those some have heard, but for the uh, for others, it's their first time actually hearing it. And yeah, so, I'm just so, going to give you game. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, it's what you know. It's, that's why Pernell and I are here. You know, so uh, it just want to you know for anybody who, by the way, who's interested in what we can do because. Uh, 
the great thing about having Angel on, you know, and the fact that Angel is a is a student of mine, is that uh, you know we offer mentorship, you know, mm -hmm. to our students. That's part of the course. But we also, because we have a consulting side of the uh, company, we uh, also, you know, we we offer mentorship for people. So Absolutely. anybody who is wanting to know more about that and the cost of what it, you know, because nothing, you know, if you're watching watching our show, you get it for free. But uh, we're pretty reasonable. But you can call us for more information. And the number is at the bottom of the screen, of course, at uh, 951-468-5330. And uh, you can set up a quick, uh, you know, call. Chance, what it's going to do, it's going to take you to directly to a voicemail. So nobody's going to answer the call right away. Just leave your name, your uh, telephone number, and the best time to reach you. Let us know where you're at in the, in the, uh, in the country because we're in, uh, on the, the West Coast, but somebody mm -hmm. from the East Coast so just let us know according to, you know, which area of the country you're at. So, uh, you know, if you tell us to call call you, it's, uh, you know, 7 o'clock at night, you know, we're not calling you at 10 o'clock at night because we're calling 7 o'clock from our time. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just want to put that out to the audience and stuff, that we are here for you. So I'll give you an example of how our mentoring services work, Angel. Let's say, for instance, that you've been a technician in the sterile processing field for 10 years, and you've been thinking about going into management for some time, but you don't really know how to approach it. You don't know whether you should take classes or not. You just don't know how to navigate this and where to go. We provide expert advice and direction on how you can get from where you are now into that manager's chair. Yeah. How can we do that? We've been in that manager's chair. Mm -hmm. We've been in that director's chair. Yeah. We've helped people to get into those chairs over the course of our careers. So that is a service that we're very proud of. And if it's, it's a service that we believe many more people should take advantage of. Yeah. That's one of the things that we do, and, and we do a really good job of preparing experienced technicians to take that next step up. Well, that's exciting to know. Uh, it definitely makes me feel 100% um, more uh, confident in the decision I made by, you know, um, taking courses with uh, CSS that, you know, to know that it wasn't just, you know, my time with the course and getting ready to take the exam and then that was it. And then you let me go. <laughs> uh, but knowing that this is a, a resource that I, I'll have, you know, um, during my career in zero processing. So that's, that's very comforting, very comforting to know. Well, you know what? I'm going to switch uh, the tables now, uh, Angel, uh, Anya. You know, we brought you on to, uh, to interview us, but I have a question yeah. for you. Sure. So tell us a little bit uh, behind your decision making. Uh, two questions. You know, why did you choose sterile processing? And uh, what led you to come to Central Sterilization Solutions, uh, choosing us as your school? Um, well, I chose sterile processing um, because I, in some sense, sort of uh, fell upon it um, working in a dental office. Um, I was the office manager and we had you know, hygienists and we had our um, RDAs and I wanted to find more ways that I could be, you know, more well-rounded and more you know, help to the office rather than only just being the manager. Um, and so I asked the assistants a lot, you know, what, what can I do to help, you know, um, you know, what can you show me? And, and they were gracious, you know, and willing to um, answer every question and show me step by step. And one of the things that they got into um, teaching me was um, the sterilization, breaking down the operatories and getting them ready for the next patient, you know, making sure everything was, you know, the way that the doctor liked it. Um, and I found it really interesting and I, you know, 
any opportunity I could help them, you know, I, I would do that. And it, what was rewarding was is that, you know, if we were really busy and the, and the girls were kind of running around stressed out thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't have, clean the room. It's not ready for the next patient. I would say, oh, you know what? I went in there and I already did that. I, I took care of all of that for you. So um, it, it was just really fascinating to me. And um, then I learned that, you know, that there are um, some dental offices that actually have um, people who that's their only job. That's what they do. They they prepare the operatories. They do the decontamination, the cleaning, the sterilization, the whole process. Um, you know, rather than being a dental assistant, that, that's their primary job. And I thought that's really fascinating. Um, so when the time came for me to really think about what I wanted to do next in life, um, you know, I did what everybody did. I went to the Internet <laughs> and yeah. did a Google search. And I started looking um, at some programs you know, that are here. Um, I'm in San Diego. And um, one of the very first programs that I looked into and um, talked with the counselor um, I learned that the program was $16,500 <laughs> and it wasn't even here in California. So I thought that's an awful lot of money for <laughs> to pay for a course. And at the time, they weren't sure that the course was going to be starting in the spring. And um, then there was another program that I went to um, uh, that their course was about $19,000. Um, and it didn't... Um, it just didn't seem very like cohesive to what I, what it was that I wanted to do. I felt like I was being deterred to do something else, and so I that you know didn't really interest me and didn't excite me. And so as I continued my uh, research, I found um, CSS. I reached out, and one of the things that was striking to me was is that almost you know within an hour of me leaving an inquiry. Um, on the chat window, uh, I got a call back. And so I thought, wow, that's amazing, you know, that there's, you know, there's that sense of urgency. And um, all of my questions were answered right away. And it, the conversation was focused on, you know, the course I wanted to take. And I was, I didn't feel like I was being diverted at all. And um, I, I was just excited just at the fact that, you um, like I said, the sense of urgency that that was there and just, you know, I asked my question, I got the answer that I wanted and it just, you know, it, it made me feel, okay, this is, this would be a good step for me. Um, I was sad to learn that there wasn't any in-person classes, of course, with, you know, COVID, but um, overall I was really happy with the, with the decision that I made. And the funny thing is, and I'm not sure, Harry, if you know this, but when I started my course with you, um, you had already been three weeks into the the new the new class, and so um, I think because I already had some sort of working knowledge of you know sterilization and instruments and you know things like the autoclave and and the ultrasonic, I think that kind of gave me a little bit of an advantage there. And, and I remember um, Catherine saying to me, okay, well, you've got three weeks, you know, <laughs> to catch up. And by the way, um, the class is on Tuesday. And this was like Friday, you know, <laughs> the Friday before the class. <laughs> and so, um, so I thought, oh my gosh, I have the weekend to, you know, learn everything I possibly can to get right up to speed to where everyone was in the class. Um, but even with that, um, Catherine was gracious to, you know, like um, express the the textbooks to me so that I had everything on Monday for sure that so that I was fully ready and could follow along. So that was another thing that made me feel really good too about the course. Um, but it, it's also the options that were provided was something that I didn't hear from you know, the other institutes that I that I looked at. And if you're curious. Um, the the course that was sixteen thousand five hundred was from Pima Medical Institute, and the course that was nineteen thousand was from UEI. Um, I I like the fact that you know if you wanted to take the course, CSS made it possible for you to do it you know financially. Um, I saw that there is an option you can you know take the class and and do a financing program, which I think is really great. You know sometimes. A lot of people make their decisions you know, based on cost. Um, that's something that I've seen in the dental field. You know, a lot of people will say, okay, well, I'll get, you know, this um, implant crown, you know, um, you know, because I can't afford it or I can't do that, you know, because I can't afford it. 
Um, and I, I thought that was really, really great. And it wasn't something that was immediately pushed upon me when Catherine called me back to say, oh, you have a question. Let's talk about financing you and getting you enrolled. So it was just, you know, uh, along the way, there's always options that were presented. And that's something that's really important to me and that I look for, you know, in just about anything, but especially a program where I'm looking to do a career. So that's that's kind of my journey and how how I got here. So. And and I was lucky enough to have Harry as my instructor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think actually, uh, I think CSS is uh, lucky to have you as a as a student. And uh, so, you know, one of the things, the difference is, you know, you talked about the sixteen thousand uh, mm -hmm. dollars one course, and, and the other school was nineteen thousand. Uh, and this is for sterile processing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, other places in California, and I'm not afraid to use their names. We have Glendale Career College. There's Premier Career College and American Career College. And one of the things that people should be aware of and uh, be careful of is that if you inquire about the sterile processing pro program, uh, be very cautious because what they're going to do. I, I've had students who joined our, our school that let us know that what they tried to do is switch them over to their uh, surgical tech program. Mm -hmm. And of course the minimum cost usually for that is going to be about $32,000. Yeah. And that's just an awful lot of money to be saddled with uh, and having to worry about having to pay, you know, the, you know, one thing I think that sep uh, separates us uh, from the rest of the competition, and I really don't feel that they are competition when it comes to sterile processing. Number one is the cost. You know, mm -hmm. you know I heard you again saying 16000 19000 uh, for the course. You know, for us, uh, I feel that the price is very reasonable. It's, you know, $2,500. Uh, we do offer a... Uh, you know, a payment plan, you know, we, we partner with a company called Sweet Pay so mm -hmm. that students can finance it uh, and over a three to five year period. So oftentimes their, their monthly payments are about, you know, let's say 50 to $70 a month, you know, which is a lot more affordable than some, you know, uh, yeah. programs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and then if we have students that their credit is really bad, we're talking about the low 500s or, or below. Yeah. And, you know, so, you know, one of the lenders on, on sweet pay, you know, they, they'll still finance you, but unfortunately got to be careful. Don't just right away select, say, yes, I'll do it. Um, because sometimes they can charge a high interest rate. Mm -hmm. but if that happens. We have a second alternative where we can do in-house financing. We do that on a case by case basis, uh, based on what sweet pays uh, lenders have offered. You know, but we're not wanting to turn in, you know, a twenty-five hundred dollar bill into a six thousand to eleven thousand dollar bill because your credit was, you know, really bad. But we have other alternatives. Right. So the other thing I think that sets us apart is the fact that you know other other schools offer help with resumes. Um, now we're not going to do all the work for you. What we do is we have the students set up their resume. Uh, and then send it into us, and uh, then we modify it in order to make sure that the recruiter in the human resource office looks at your resume and they immediately feel that you're a qualified candidate. So long as you're certified and you have a good resume, uh, I'd say nine times out of ten, you're going to get the, uh, the interview. Uh, once you come to the interview uh, portion, you know, you get a get a hold of us, and we walk you through the expectations. We give you a script on how, you know for the four sections, talking about cleaning and decontamination, prep assembly, instrument uh, you know assembly, and uh, and inspection, sterilization, and uh, ultimately case picking, picking the individual case cart for a patient's procedure. So when we script it out so you know and you're prepared. So based on the book work that you've done in our class, the script, and, you know, when we're not in a COVID situation mm -hmm. where uh, you're able to get your hands-on experience along with, again, with this script, you're going to be prepared uh, more so than any other student from any other school. 
And the last thing that we have is uh, we have a tutor that is uh, awesome. And uh, for those of you who, who don't know Ken, uh, he was actually uh, started off our show with that little commercial that we had. And oh. <laughs> so Ken, you know, was a, you know, kind of in your situation, Angel, mm -hmm. where he uh, was pretty much, he was done with the particular uh, line of work that he wanted, was doing, and he was looking for something more. And he mm -hmm. did his research and looked at a lot of schools and he chose us as well. And he was one of the uh, students that, you know, before COVID, decided he didn't want to do his hands-on experience. He was ready to go get a job, and he went out and got a job. And, awesome. uh, you know, he was phenomenal enough that, uh, that uh, he started his own study group when he was in uh, school that uh, I ended up hiring him as our tutor. And uh, wow. you know, phenomenal in preparing students for, to be able to pass the course as well as, more importantly, preparing you uh, for the certification. So, Angel, if you haven't met him, you know, after the show, I'll make sure you have his uh, contact. Oh, yes, absolutely. And, uh, what the most, you know, the thing that I find most impressive of, about him is that within the first 18 months after being hired as a technician, the hospital down in San Diego hired him and promoted him to a supervisor position. And oh, wow. uh, that's probably the quickest I've seen somebody advance in this, uh, this career. That's so, awesome. Even better so, to know he's here in San Diego. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a, a little bit north, but he's, uh, but he's, he's in San, uh, San Diego County and stuff. So awesome. But I will definitely pass on that information to you to make sure that you're, uh, again, all our students have access to them. We talk about, I, you know, I talk about it during the course and stuff. Unfortunately, like you said, you started the third week. So the very first class yeah. where it had his information, uh, you didn't get it. But I'll make sure that you uh, get <laughs> So, Angel, um, I want to thank you for uh, coming on to the show. Thank uh, you. It's been wonderful. As a matter of fact, it has been uh, so good. And uh, uh I feel that you probably have more questions, so if you're open to it, I'd like to invite you back on uh, for the 28th. And okay. let me uh, just uh, check my calendar real quick, uh, just to make sure that, uh, yep, it'll be the 28th. I'd like to invite you back on to go ahead and answer some uh, more questions to us. Awesome, I would like that, and I'll have questions. <laughs> All right. So, uh, again, Angel, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much. Thank All you. Right. All right. We'll see, and we'll uh, be talking to you next week. All right. Well, uh, Purnell, I thought this was a uh, an excellent show. I think it was uh, um, especially nice the fact that we had Angel to be able to come on to be interviewing the interviewers and stuff. So, uh, my last question to you is: is do you have uh, anything else to say? Absolutely. We'll be back. Thank you, everyone. And uh, just want to show you one more time our tutor, Ken, and what his thoughts are on sterile processing. The job market right now is, I feel, much better than it was even when I went in as the result of the COVID pandemic that we've had, our profession has been even under more spotlight and given even more of an opportunity. We're infection control, we're infection preventionists, and breaking the chain of infection and destroying viruses is our job, and it's what we're trained to do as professionals. That field is going to keep growing and growing. The sterile processing field was a great way to come into the hospital setting. Again, you're coming right into the operating room.